My name is Wale Farrell. I'm a tech entrepreneur and you are watching Tech Roundup, your weekly opinion, views and analysis of the top tech events happening around the world with a focus on Nigeria. On Tech Roundup today, we'll be reviewing the news that Bolt, the ride-hailing company, has raised another $56 million to boost its expansion. We'll talk about an HBS article that says that the age of a successful entrepreneur is higher than you might think. And we'll close out the episode with the highlights from the recently signed Finance Act in Nigeria. There's a lot on the agenda today, so let's get started. Bolt, formerly known as Taxify, has raised venture debt of about $56 million from an European development bank to boost its global expansion. The new capital is expected to accelerate Bolt's expansion across Western Europe and it is the latest fund that the company has secured as it has already raised in excess of 200 million euros from other strategic investors. Bolt currently has over 30 million users in 150 cities and 35 countries around the world. Bolt started in Nigeria in 2016 and has grown consi considerably to become one of the most expansive ride hailing company, companies in the country. They are currently available in eight cities, including major hubs like Lagos and Abuja. The ride hailing business in Nigeria has gotten the attention of global investors, regulators, and other enthusiasts. Uh, the space is already getting saturated with both ind indigenous and foreign companies like Bolt. However, in my opinion, to be successful in this market, the companies must focus on the following. One, price points that work. Every market is different and service providers must always recognize that. A friend recently posted that he was paying $5 on the average for transportation around Nigeria, while to get, from, uh, to get home from, his, from, from the airport in the US, using the same service, he paid $125. Nigerian consumers are price sensitive and pricing must be done right and must be comparable to the alternatives, including bikes and local buses. Two, safety and incident reporting. This has been an issue globally, but more so in Nigeria because of the security incidents that occur on a daily basis. Service providers must provide tools that make case reporting easier and capture incident footages without compromising privacy. And three, incentives for drivers. This is important to attract drivers multiple ride hailing apps. Incentive will guarantee more time and ride share, which invariably leads to more market share and revenue for the company. A recent Harvard Business School review article caught my attention and I thought it may be a good discussion point right here on Tech Roundup. The article states that the average age of a successful startup founder is 45. What was your immediate reaction to that? You agreed, surprised, or totally shocked? It's, it's widely believed that the most successful entrepreneurs are young. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and Mark Zuckerberg were in, all in their early 20s when they founded world-renowned companies. But do these famous cases reflect a generalized pattern? The research team analyzed the ages of all business founders in the US in recent years by leveraging confidential administrative data sets from the U.S. Census Bureau. The team found that the average age of entrepreneurs at the time they founded their companies is 42. To focus on businesses that are closer in spirit to pro prototypical high-tech startups, the research used a variety of indicators, patents granted, VC investment, or employment of technical workers. The average age of high-tech founders fall in the early 40s. The research also used other indicators but invariably concluded that overall the empirical evidence shows that successful entrepreneurs tend to be middle-aged, not young. But the question is how applicable is this finding to the Nigerian entrepreneurial stage? Let me use myself as an example. When I graduated from the university about 20 years ago, I was more focused on getting a job than starting a business, primarily because of survival and also because of the training we got up to that point. Uh, I moved to the US for an MBA at the age of 29. At that time, many of my classmates from everywhere around the world were much younger and had stints in running and selling businesses. I remember talking to a classmate from Korea 
who had exited and sold a business for about five million dollars at the age of 23. After school, I continued to work in employment for six more years before finally starting a tech venture at the age of 33. Obviously, the terrain has changed a bit uh, as there is more focus on building businesses in Nigeria than it has been in the past. However, I believe the following statements are likely true and should be considered by an aspiring entrepreneur regardless of their age. One, with age comes experience. So age should not be seen as a liability, rather as an asset which, if leveraged constructively, helps with business execution. Two, the passion to execute and drive the business is proportional to the individual and their belief system and not necessarily their age. And three, the success or otherwise of a venture often goes, be, often goes beyond the founder and more attributable to the team he or she is able to build around them. In the light of this, however, why do some VCs persist in betting on young founders? The research doesn't definitively answer this question with the data, but believes that this mechanism could uh, be at play. VCs may not simply be looking to identify firms with the highest growth potential, rather they may seek investments that will yield the highest return. And it is possible that young founders are more financially constrained than more experienced ones, leading them to seek upside to investors at a lower price. In other words, young entrepreneurs may be a better deal for investors than more experienced founders. In our last story this week, President Buhari has signed the Finance Bill, now tagged the Finance Act 2019, structured to reform the country's tax law, aligning them with global best practices, supporting small businesses, encouraging investment in infrastructure and capital market, and of course, increasing revenue for the government. While there are several provisions, including VAT, which is now 7.5% from 5%, capital gain exemption for loss of employment compensation less than 10 million naira, stamp duty of 15 naira for electronic transfer above 10,000 naira, and Petroleum Profit Act. The most pertinent one for businesses, including technology businesses, are changes to company income taxes based on the size of the company. Early stage companies with revenue less than 25 million naira will no longer be required to pay company income tax, which is great. Uh, medium scale businesses with revenues between 25 million naira and 100 million uh, now pay 20% CIT instead of the standard 30%, which is now only for large scale corporates with revenue over 100 million. This week, we introduced a brand new segment called Number of the Week. And this week's number is a $1 trillion. <laughs> Shares of Google's parent company Alphabet hit a new all high recently, pushing the company's market value to $1 trillion in the process. Alphabet joins companies like Apple and Microsoft as companies worth at least $1 trillion. We'd like to hear your comments and feedback, so please connect with me on LinkedIn at Wally Farrell or subscribe to the Tech Roundup YouTube channel. If you're a founder, please take advantage of the new startup profile. Send us your video for a chance to be featured right here in our upcoming episode. Please also remember to listen to Tech Roundup on Techie Talk every Wednesday from 1.30 p.m on Nigeria Info 99.3 if you're in Lagos. Have a great weekend guys and see you all again next week. Kasumi.